Hey peeps, Sarah here from Sparrow Springs, and this is an abstract watercolor painting tutorial for how I made this painting. And I also want to talk to you a little bit about why I think everyone should try abstract art. Real quick, if you are new here, I am an artist who likes to dabble in traditional and digital art. If you like learning about a variety of different art mediums, consider hitting that subscribe button. Okay, so let's start off with supplies and a game plan. I have Master's Touch Premium Cold Press Watercolor Paper, and I recently got this set of 12 Half Pan Cake watercolors from Arteza. I haven't used them a lot, but I'm definitely liking them so far. And it comes with this nice compact case with mixing trays, and it also comes with a small water brush, which I also really like. I won't be using it today, but it's not a bad all-around brush if you're on the go. Next up we have art tape to tape off the borders. This is great for securing your piece while minimizing the risk of damaging the piece when you remove it. I have two jars for water, one for cleaning brushes and one for mixing with clean water, paper towel for dabbing off excess water, and I have a one inch flat wash brush and also a number three round brush for detailing. Finally, we have some rubber cement to use as a masking liquid. For this particular painting, you would have to use rubber cement because it's a bit thicker and it's easier to drizzle on the paper. Liquid frisket is a bit too runny. As we begin prepping our surface, I'm going to tape off my edges. Can I just say, there were quite a few of you that had opinions on how to apply and remove tape. So this time I'm trying a suggestion of sticking it to a piece of clothing first before applying the tape. I still had a little bit of ripping at the end. I probably just need better paper, but honestly, I'm not too concerned about this because it's a fun experimental painting. Now, if I were doing a commission or a highly detailed piece, then I would probably bite the bullet and get a pad of Arches 100% cotton watercolor paper. But for now, no big deal. Just peel the tape slowly and at an angle and you won't get a ton of tearing. Now we get to the fun part. Let's drizzle some rubber cement. <laughs> So for my composition, I am planning on putting emphasis off in one corner, so I will have the majority of rubber cement streaks in that upper corner and keep it more subtle as it moves away, but I will have some lines leading to my focus. To emphasize that focus, I will also be placing my darkest and purest colors in this region and my thickest lines of resist will be there for contrast as well, so hopefully the eye will be drawn to that region, but still have some other lines to follow around the piece. You will notice I get pretty technical, and I do that on purpose. I will share a little bit about why in a bit. As I let the rubber cement dry, I'm going to work on mixing my colors. I'm not going to go huge in detail on how I achieve these colors, because basically I'm just winging it based on my knowledge of color theory. I have a palette that I have picked out, and I'm tweaking it just a bit so that salmon color is more of a vibrant red. I love pops of red in a cool color scheme. And with the rubber cement, I think it will give me more opportunity to have those colors in close proximity without them all blending together and making a big muddy pool of brown. <laughs> I have noticed that the retro designs and color schemes are really big right now, so I wanted to take it for a spin. Now I swatch out all my colors to make sure I'm happy with the final color palette, and as usual, we are part way through the video and we are finally ready to start painting. For some people this can be rather annoying, and I wish that I could be one of those people that just throws paint at a canvas and it looks great, but I'm not. This is why I lean towards more of a technical approach, because you can actually learn how to make a visually appealing piece without trying to quote unquote tap into your psyche, and I personally will never encourage that anyways. Which someone actually belittled me for talking too much in a previous video that I need to let go and something about the subconscious. Okay, yes, that is one way that some people will approach abstract art, but it's not the only way. If you feel like tapping out and just painting without a plan and that's relaxing to you, go for it. I get frustrated because I dislike the end results and I'm a 100% believer that rules and principles of art are meant to be broken. 
but at the same time, they're a fantastic set of guidelines to springboard you onto the path of something that you are actually happy with. So if you want to try things for the first time and you don't know where to start, that's where you start. And whether some of these people like to admit it or not, a lot of the subconscious is based off of patterns that they have already set for themselves after doing it so much, like muscle memory. And just because you're being technical, or better yet, intentional, it doesn't mean that it's not a good abstract art. In fact, I think that everyone should try abstract art at least once, even if you are accustomed to doing realistic portraits or landscapes. And here's why. Abstract art removes the need to focus on anatomy, lighting, and other elements of realism so that you can focus entirely on being intentional with color, contrast, and composition. It's so easy to get hyper-focused on posing, lighting, anatomy, hair, and a lot of times you don't even notice what you are doing with the color scheme, the background, and overall composition. When I get into the habit of planning out what I want to do beforehand, like with my abstract watercolors, I am so much happier with my final result. I know for a lot of people the response is, yeah, well, abstract isn't really my thing. It's not mine either. In fact, here are some of the most recent images I have created. It has absolutely nothing to do with abstract but I can tell you that I am much more intentional with my colors and composition when I get to these other pieces when I've been practicing with abstract. Honestly, give it a try. Not just once, try a handful of them so that you can get past the I don't know how to do this so I don't like it phase. I hope you guys are enjoying this video. I do apologize for the long break. My studio was a disaster after the Christmas season. I'm trying to manage my time now that Arrow's naps are limited and I have had an abundance of migraines. I know, excuses, excuses, but here we are. And we are getting back on track with some more videos. As you can see, we have passed the 1000 subscriber mark like a while ago. So now subscribers can vote on actually what kind of new videos you want to see. So the vote this time was an overwhelming landslide to see another abstract watercolor, but don't get too comfortable because we will be venturing into more with the digital art too. On the note of launching new things, I'm gonna show you the final result of this painting in just a second, but I need to share this. So I just launched my new website called Art Squirrels for all the people that love a variety of art forms and squirrel all over the place. We're just getting started, but I do have a blog started. We have some merch through Redbubble specifically for artists. And I have some other products like Procreate brushes in the plans to offer at my shop. But if you want to get started, I have a free PDF of 50 different recommendations of my favorite art supplies in the areas of drawing, painting, sculpting, and digital art. I will leave a link for that down below. So just enter your email and you will get that. Then you will also receive future updates as well. Don't worry, I don't spam like most people. So. That's what's going on here at Sparrow Springs, and here is the final result and close-up. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm really happy with the results. Um, I think this was really a fun exercise because I've never tried this before, but I can't take credit because I did see it on Pinterest. So leave a comment down below if you have any questions or if there's something specific you would like to see next. That's all for now. I'll see you later, peeps.